All right, today we're gonna do a quick video on plotting the regression line and making residuals plots, which is something that's pretty important for uh, meeting all the conditions of doing a regression. So I have a list here of the days of students were absent and their GPA. And what I would like you to do right now, if you wanna do this along with me at home, just type this uh, days absent into L1 and GPA into L2. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a scatter plot and then we're going to add a trend line to that scatter plot, use that to make some predictions, and I'll show you a couple little tricks, and then we'll see what, uh, what we can do about checking the residuals to see if we were actually even doing um, an appropriate analysis. So, enter this in, push pause now. I'm not going to pause because, well, I don't have to. So, here is your calculator, and I want you to go into, you went into stat, edit, and you have your L1, and L2 has your uh, days absent here in L1, and L2, this is the largest calculator ever, um, is your GPA. So in order to, to plot this first, we're just going to go to stat plot. Into our first plot, make sure it's on. We're doing a scatter plot of L1 versus L2. It's all set, so now I want to graph this. Um, I can hit graph, but, the, but to set the window perfectly, I like to hit zoom 9. Zoom 9, and here it is. So to me, it seems to be... Uh, definitely negative, uh, fairly straight, except for this, you know, this might be an outlier. It seems there's this negative thing. We might have an outlier here. Um, but I want to add a trend line to this. And we found out how to make the equation before in the last video, but we're going to make, we're going to have to go back to that and do one more little thing to add a trend line to it. So what should we do? Well, to get, we need to get the equation of this thing, and you know that's a statistical calculation, stat calc, and I'm going to do what's called a linear regression. Now this is the form y equals mx plus b, which is the way we used to do lines. Um, but now we're in stats, we kind of mixed it up, we're doing a little bit different, so you're going to go down to 8. And what we do is now, we, now a, the first thing we write, is going to be our intercept, b will be our slope, so we're going to run lin reg this way. So here we go, I'm going to run lin reg, and I'm going to do it on L1, second L1, and I'm going to run it also on L2, that's my y. And now is the new part. I want to tell the calculator to put in an equation into a y variable. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to t tell it, I want you to do this regression, but take this equation and jam it in uh, for y. So I have to just tell it, I want to put, make it as y. So I go to vars, variables, and I want to do y, I go over to the right, so what did I hit vars, then I went over to the right once, and I'm going to enter a function, so I hit enter. I want it to be y1, so I hit enter. So now it's saying we're going to run a linear regression on the two lists, and we're going to plug the equation into uh, y1. I hit enter, and I get some great information. Uh-oh, I'm missing a couple things here, but I do have my equation. Notice that I don't have my r and my r squared value. That's because I reset my calculator, my diagnostics are off. I'll um, turn those back on later. And let's see right now if we graph what happens. There it is, and what did I find here? My line of best fit. So you can see this line is my line of best fit. It doesn't seem to fit very well this data. It might be because of this outlier. It might be because there's some underlying curve happening here. So I got the, the, the line on here and what's nice if I hit the trace button notice it gives me these data points for 3.2 and I go over to the right and left and my cursor goes from one spot to the next, one data value to the next. So it has all the data values on there. But what I want to do is move this cursor to the line. So I hit down. Notice now it's on the line. And what this does, it allows us to make predictions of GPAs for anybody for a number of days absent, because this is what our model does. So suppose somebody was absent about 20 days, we expect them to have a GPA of about 2.8. This is actually a horrible model for this data, and we'll talk about why in a minute. It violates one of the assumptions. Um, but if it was a good model, boom. If it was a good model, you notice someone with like 40 absence is expected to have a GPA of about 2.2. So as absences go up, GPA falls. So that's a great thing that you can do. And if I want to find, if I want to make like an exact, see how it's, you can't get exactly 30, someone who's been absent 30 days. Um, what I can just do is type in the number 30, 3, 0. And it says, well, when my X is 30, enter. It plots the point exactly, 30, 2.59, so someone with about a 2.6 GPA, if this was a better model. The reason why it's not a better model, it violates what condition? Straight enough condition, this 
data is not straight and it will become really obvious when we plot the residuals. As you know, the residuals are just all the vertical distances to these points. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. In order to make a residuals plot, here's what we have to do. We've got to go back into our stat, edit, and we have to make a list for residuals. How do we do that? Well, we go up, over to the right, until you get to the blank list that has no name. Ah, no name. There's a little A here. That means your alpha lock is on, which means now what's been activated are all the letter keys, which you can see above in the right, the top right corner of each button. I'm going to type in resid, R-E-S-I-D, which is R E S L B Q R S I. This is not a QWERTY keyboard. Um, D, A B C D. It's an alphabetical, so it makes it a little harder for the. And I hit enter. Notice not only did it make a list resid. These are all the residuals. Cool. So what is a, what does a residual plot looks like? Well, it looks like this. If you take this line and straighten it out, it'll show you the pattern, the curve um, of the data set. It, it makes uh, patterns that aren't obviously there at the beginning. It really like uh, magnifies patterns, so you can look for patterns in the residuals, and they might break the curvature um, condition. So I'm going to plot this right now. I'm plotting x versus y, I'm plotting absences versus GPA, but I want to plot absences versus residuals. So these guys will be positive, these guys will be negative. So I'm going to go into stat plot, and I'm going to keep plot one, we'll keep plot one what it's at right now, I'm going to shut it off. So I'm going to shut the first plot off, but I'm going to turn a new plot on, plot two. And I'm going to make a scatter plot, let me turn it on first, on. I'm going to make a scatter plot which scatter plots are on, L1, but now I want to put in residuals. How do I find residuals? Well, it's entered under list. List is right above stats, so I'm going to go second, list, resid. It's my first one. I'm just going to hit enter. And if some might be seventh on your list or twelfth, you've got to scroll down and hit enter. Now I'm saying I'm plotting L1 versus resid. So I hit graph. And I'm back to my last one. What the heck's going on? I don't want to see that. I want to see my resid. Oh, I forgot the trusty button. I need to hit zoom nine. Aha! There's my residuals plot. That shows me a plot of the residuals, all the points that were above the line and below the line. You can see there seems to be this pattern right here, but if I remove this weird outlier, I might get a totally different um, line. But that's how you find the residuals plot. Again, as you turn on, uh, you, go to a you go to one of these plots, make sure you have L1 versus resid. You plot it, zoom 9, and you will find it. I can go back to, if I want to go back to the old graph, I just go back to plot 1, up to plot 1, turn plot 1 on, okay? Make sure I forgot to turn plot 2 off. Go back to plot 2, turn that off, and hit graph, and wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot again. I need to, I have a new plot on. I should hit zoom 9. Ah, there it is, it's back again. So the little, that's how you do all that stuff. Hopefully that was helpful for you and you can now plot residuals and regression lines and make predictions by hitting trace, down, get on the line and type in any amount of days absent, 99, enter. Oh, wait a minute. Why can't I predict 99? Because you're extrapolating from the data. I'm extrapolating! This automatically stops you from extrapolating. Um, so it's saying you can't do it because you're, that 99 absence is just outside of the data you have. It's way out there. That's extrapolation. It won't let you do it. Um, there's actually a way to do it, but uh, for right now, that's just enough for you to see. So let's uh, go to, I can't do 99, clear, but I can do 9 and predict, um, let me see, trace down, nine days absent, enter, I have about a 3.2 GPA. All right, hopefully that made sense. Bye. Get this off here. Oh.